Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the JTL Industries Limited Q4 of 524 earnings conference call hosted by Nuama Wealth Management. As a reminder, all participants line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Sneha Talreja from Nuama Wealth Management. Thank you and over to you ma'am. Thank you Manuja. Good morning all. On behalf of Nuama Wealth Management, we welcome you all to the JTL Industries Q4 FY24 conference call. We are joined today by the senior management of JTL Industries. represented by Mr Atul Gurg CFO Mr Pranav Singla full time director Mr Dhruv Singla full time director we will now start with the opening remarks by the management followed by the Q&A i would now like to hand over the call to Mr Pranav Singla for his brief opening remarks over to you Pranav thanks neha and thanks to all of you for the call uh, good morning everyone thank you for joining us today i am delighted to welcome you all to the jtl industries conference call where we will discuss the financial performance for the quarter for year ending financial 24 and for the whole year as well uh, which will overview of our current capacity expansion and recent acquisition as well before we delve into the details of our quarterly results let me gc introduce our company to those who may be less familiar with three decades of experience jpl industries has transformed into a rapidly expanding company in steel tube manufacturing our product lines span various offerings from ERW black steel tubes to pre-galvanized and galvanized pipes large diameter steel tubes and pipes solar structures and hollow structures hollow sections a specialization line in crafting vat products focusing on galvanized pipes ensuring superior quality standards and impeccable finishing across or off jtl operates five cutting edge manufacturing facilities across india located uh, to secure raw materials at competitive rates and facilitate our expansion into global and domestic markets these facilities consist of three plants in punjab one in maharashtra and one in chhattisgarh collectively capable of producing over a million tons as a whole recently uh, we acquired controlling stake of 67% in naba steel and metals located in mandi govangar punjab the acquisition provides jtl with ownership of an advanced steel product manufacturing facility The newly acquired plant boasts a manufacturing capacity of 2 lakh tons and specializes in coil and long steel products such as billets. The strategic move enhances JTS backward integration capacity, increasing coil production from 1.5 lakh tons at Raipur plant to 2.5 lakh tons uh, and augmenting long product output by an additional lakh tons across Chhattisgarh and Punjab. JTL is set to enhance its production capacity in Maharashtra. and so the through a substantial expansion initiative the initial phase targets dies overall the capacity from 0.6 million tons to 2 million tons by incorporating dst and traditional forming uh, technologies for uh, uh, manufacturing galvanizing steel tubes and pipes this move will enhance plant cap- uh, capacity utilization and manufacturing efficiency and diversify our range or value added products to new geographical markets regarding our financial performance JTL has achieved a remarkable milestone by attending its highest ever sales volume reaching a unprecedented of around 3.4 lakh tons metric ton this uh, this surpasses the sales volume of the previous year uh, which stood at 2.4 lakh tons showcasing a robust uh, robust growth of over 24 uh, 42% additionally JTL experienced a significant raise in the sales of value added products with a 35% increase climbing from 74000 tons in fy23 to around a lakh tons in fy24 our revenue grew 31% to 2040 crores in fy24 compared to 1550 crores in fy23 the company witnessed a significant uptick in revenue attributed to robust demand of products and strategic expansion initiatives undertaken during the year on the profitability front we remain committed to gradually increasing the same since a beta for the uh, financial year fiscal year was reported at 153 crores with a beta margin uh, which was healthy at 7.5% the performance was supported by several critical factors including the increase of vap share 
overall scale of operation and continuous focus on enhancing efficiencies across all our plants. Turning to our future looking guidance, we anticipate a 35% growth in the revenue for uh, FR25 compared to FR24 while maintaining a beta metric turn of 5000 plus for the whole year. Updated CAPEX remains consistent with expectations for the up upcoming period. Thank you for um, joining us today and I look for an engaging discussion. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nitish Dutt from Burman Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, my first question is I want to understand what is your primary versus uh, secondary mix? Uh, and also within secondary, are we uh, manufacturing from uh, Patra re-rolling kind of material or uh, sponge iron based uh, HR slate HR coil? Uh, thank you for the question. So our capacity as a whole in a company is 50-50% for primary and secondary. So the output for the same for this year was in the same issue as well. 50% uh, of our failures uh, this year were on to primary market and 50% was to secondary market. And uh, for making secondary products, we procured billets and we rolled them into narrow bed coils at a rider plant. So yes, that's Patra, which is the same thing which uh, you mentioned. And for a Mandi operation, where we have a capacity of 2 lakh tons, we procure our secondary coils from the local uh, players in the market as well. So that's how we operate our primary and secondary. And for primary, we procure material from JZB and Tata. Alta Data Bussi plant and our Maharashtra plant, each having capacity of a lakh tons and two lakh tons each, respectively. Got it. That's helpful, sir. Uh, secondly, I want to understand over the last two, three years, has the secondary uh, segment been a big driver of growth for us? Because the secondary prices had been lower than uh, primary steel, and uh, hence there was a market sort of tailwind uh, because of low prices. And also, one of our large listed competitors has been claiming that the market is uh, potentially shifting to primary because number one, uh, consumers' preference for increase uh, better quality, and second, as the new HRC capacities are coming up, uh, the primary steel prices are expected to go down. So, just want your perspective on both of these things, on uh, how you see uh, the market will move. Uh, if at all, and uh, how uh, you are prepared to handle that? Yeah, uh, to answer your question there, uh, there has always been a primary and secondary market in the majority of the products in India, be it uh, long products such as uh, TMP uh, and uh, uh, say ID, garter, channels. So there has always been a primary and secondary divide into the Indian market. As for the gearable yeah, pipe segment, uh, uh, it is more of the usage of the product and the gauge of the product which is available for a primary and a secondary option. So uh, in the recent past where uh, a lighter gauge structure is required for say probably or steel gauge, uh, lighter uh, load bearing structure such as carports, sheds, uh, just a shade shed. Uh, so all these applications uh, wherein a lighter gauge steel is required, uh, which from a primary source of product becomes even more expensive uh, uh, with the deltas of uh, thinner gauge. Uh, there uh, is the main utility of the secondary product and with uh, the increase of usage of uh, steel uh, as regards to wood, uh, direct replacement of wood, we, we, we've already seen an increase in demand of secondary products in the last uh, few years. That's why 
uh, we've grown uh, say equally in the, both the segments. We are going forward uh, since we are expanding our uh, product profile. We are going from earlier we used to do only five to six inches, and uh, by, by last year we started up to twelve inches. Going forward, we're coming up with a BFT mill, which, which, which is essentially a twenty-inch mill. So uh, uh, we are going towards a, a, a broader product profile, wherein uh, yes, we have to use more of the primary product. So and for different user applications. But it's safe to say that there would be uh, a, a good uh, demand for the secondary product as well, due to the use case scenarios. All right, that's really clear. Just last question on this: uh, in in your in the secondary segment, who who is your core uh, competitor? Right? Are these smaller players, and hence you are able to take advantage of your bigger scale distribution, etc. Uh, and secondly, uh, all the Big players, right? Uh, at least in the prime, on the primary side, are putting up huge capacities. So everyone is uh, on the listed side. Everyone is increasing capacities by at least two times over the next three, four years. And demand is not growing at 15, 20 percent kgar. It's likely growing at eight, ten, or low teen, uh, low teens kgar, right? So do you see uh, an overcapacity risk on both the primary and secondary side of, of the market? In the secondary market, there are numerous players, and uh, plenty of them are not in the listed space, and they are scattered across uh, Pan India. So it's hard to name uh, a specific person or a specific company. Uh, in the primary segment as well, uh, the demand maybe you uh, forecast that it's in the lower teens because of the whole election scenario and the slim demand slow down. Otherwise, the the market has been growing at a rate of 12-13%. And this is what we're expecting, or maybe higher, what we're expecting is going to happen post election. And uh, so there's no tailwind that we are expecting in the market, and it's a growing industry, and the use case scenarios are expanding as well, as Dhruv mentioned. So uh, the industry is, uh, for the time, secondly, both is growing at a good 13 14 percent. So basically, you expect that the incremental capacities that are coming up, uh, for those capacities, there is enough demand in the market to absorb the incremental capacity. See, when we are increasing our capacity in the market, we are not increasing the capacity in the product profile that were we that we were uh, uh, doing previously or the same product profile over and over again. So when when we are going forward here. Focusing more on value-added products, which which open up more space and more markets for us to venture into. For for example, DFT will open up newer sport markets for us, newer markets for structural applications, for multi-story buildings for us. So, uh, uh, what we essentially are doing is not uh, falling the herd and just uh, putting up capacities into the same uh, bl uh, black uh, pipe manufacturing up to three inches or four inches, which is the lowest. The strata of uh, uh, the value chain of uh, Yadul pipes. So that is not what we are aiming for. We are aiming for uh, increase in our product profile by increasing our size range and value added products. So uh, even if there is multiple capacities being installed in India, where there are uh, only a number of couple of players who are doing it in a value added segment, uh, rather than more of the players are going into the commercial grade pipes for uh, volume increase. Thank you. That's helpful. I'll come back in the queue. Thanks for it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pradeep Rawat from Yogya Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So my question is regarding the abnormal fixed asset turn that we generate right now. Can you shed some light on it? Uh, can you please read the question? Yeah, my question is regarding the fixed asset turn. It's it's quite high right now as compared to industry peers. So can you like uh, set some light on it? Yeah, thanks for the for your question. So our asset turn was extremely high because the mergers and acquisitions that the company has done in the recent past have been on a book value. Whatever uh, applications the company has been doing in this year, if you look at our gross block as well, which has increased from around 90 crores to around 150 crores. So this is getting our asset turn uh, down from uh, down to 14, 15 from levels of 18, 19 before. So this is a gradual shift which will happen over time and the, as the asset will sweat as well, you see the num number coming properly as well. This year as well, we are expecting 
to deploy close to 120 crores on capex so hence the keep our uh, gross log will come down our asset turnover come down further to by certain numbers which will be across similar across industry it does that previously whatever asset purchase we did for the mandi plant and the merger we did was on a book value so hence the asset term seem bigger right now okay okay so my second question is regarding that uh, you earlier you have regarded that we will outgrow our competitors like we can expand our uh, market share from 9% to 25% so uh, can you uh, what gives you confidence to outgrow our competitors what is our edge so if you look at our numbers for the whole financial year we done a tremendous 40% growth over the last financial year This has been done because we have been adding more SKUs and gathering gathering more market share from our competitors. The following approach would be that we'll be adding more SKUs itself as well and uh, uh, circulating the same product in the market. Plus, that we are a debt free company, this gives us the encouragement and confidence to make the pricing comfortable according to us. And I'm playing with the margin as well. So, hence, growing and expanding and increasing the wrap share. Uh, is easy for us because of the debt no debt uh, debt free status okay okay thank you and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ca garvit goel from invest analysis advisors please go ahead hi uh, good morning am i audible yes sir yes yeah uh, my first question is on the industry side uh, like uh, do you uh, witnessing any kind of slowdown happening at the industry level due to this political events going on uh thanks uh, uh, there is a question we don't see any uh, slowdown in the industry because of the um, scenario what is happening obviously the quarter we faced little slowdown because there were no government demand as such but apart from that after the elections are over we expect the demand to pick up again because the missions way we uh, supply products it's a basic demand for the country and this mission is bound to happen jal jeevan mission um, no matter which government comes or how it elections turn up this is the kind of industry where we cater is very safe and apart from that we don't have our major sales happening towards the sector around 20% of our sales is towards the government sector and the rest is towards dealers and exports So we always prefer to maintain a healthy mix of uh, supplies. So whenever there is a slowdown in one kind of industry, we can at least cater that other industry a little more. Yes, sir. And secondly, on your value-added mix, uh, it is not. It is also improving in the terms of absolute numbers, but uh, your value value-added mix in terms of percentage terms is not getting improved. So what is the reason for that? So if you understand to get the value product. into production the first step is to increase the black pipe production because you time i want a black pipe i can't make galvanic pipe so adding galvanic tanks is something that i have been doing every now and then in every quarter but the major outflow would be happening when all my access, uh, all my galvanizing tanks are commissioned and going down the line i'm adding gl line color coded line dft structures uh, this year itself in which uh, as a whole the wrap shape should be increasing um all together like you mentioned uh, this year we are going uh, we are targeting 5000 uh, tons of ebitda so uh, what what is exactly that that is giving you the confidence to reach to that number uh, considering uh, considering the kind of ebitda portion that we are uh, currently doing so right now uh, the products that i'm offering is galvanic pipes and bath pipes going down the line when i'm talking about adding my vap products i'm Adding products from GL line, Calcutta line, and DFT. These products are valued from day one itself. So, I am these products the have a retail return in the higher seven thousand, eight thousand. So, once the these products come into production and are start buying uh, them in the market, uh, these products from day one are valued and will obviously show a increase in the retail return. So, uh, are the product uh, are going to start uh, contributing to the revenue from this quarter only, or the upcoming quarter? No, not this quarter. We should uh, start expecting everything to be commissioned. Uh, talking about DFT in quarter two, and from H two, you should start looking at the proper numbers. We'll obviously do the trial phase of DFT next one as well. 
but the proper numbers and efficient manner would be visible from uh, h2 and are the people also uh, like uh, previous participant also asked about the uh, uh, incremental uh, supply is taking over the demand uh, so uh, is there any uh, real fear of over supply in this industry going ahead uh, can you please repeat the question you were not able to so like uh, is there any kind of uh, fear in terms of the over supply of uh, for, uh, in this industry uh, going ahead uh, considering the plans of their peers as well as plans uh, of jet industry as we mentioned before that we venture into adding more rescue every uh, like when we're expanding we are adding more rescue if we were just adding the same product then it would be a fear for us but as we are diversifying ourselves and adding more rescues in every hope phase that we are uh, conquering so this fear is not that not any bit close to us and these products that we are adding are fully value added from day one itself so there is no fear that as such that If we see a slowdown or there's oversupply in the industry for our products, but you are saying uh, these products are value added, but value added products are also manufactured by the peers as well. Now that that is why uh, I am asking this question. The DST products are not uh, manufactured by a lot of players in India right now. We will be essentially the third one, second one in India to get this technology. So there is a lot of humongous demand for the product, which we will be. Uh, Supplying. There are not many peers of us who do DST products. Okay, fine, fine. That's it for my side. There are all the rest for the future. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhananjay from Ask Investment Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. A Uh, how much is the total capex we are doing for the next two three years? And B, what is the uh, update regarding the warrants and how are we looking in terms of the inflow of the warrant money? Uh, hi, Ranjit. Thanks for your question. So the total outflow the company is expecting in capex this year is close to 150 crores plus, hmm. and uh, we'll be and if you talk about the next three four years, we'll be spending close to 500 crores plus, 600 crores plus in the coming two three years. Okay. Um, giving a like an exact figure would be tough right now because sure. uh, uh, it's a phase-wise manner enhancement. Yeah. And if you talk about the warrants, um, we are the promoters pitched in some money as well in the previous quarter. Around 170 crores is what promoter 675 crores is what totally promoter signed up for, and out of that 170 crores is what we already received in the company as well. Hmm. And uh, the other. Warrants are due to the warrants that we did before are due in uh, September. Hmm. So we expect everything to come before that around 170, 180 crores is something that we are expect to get from that. Okay, uh, perfect. I have heard the remaining questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Velikar from Access Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, so, you know, uh, specific questions on uh, capacity expansion plans. Uh, so, in FY25, we assume uh, 1 million ton to reach the target of 1 million ton, and then for FY26, how much uh, capacity expansion you expect? And also, if you can uh, uh, outline the sales volume guidance for 25 and 26. Thank you for your questions. Uh, so yes, we will be reaching the capacity mark of a million tons uh, before the year ends, and the guidance that we mentioned for this year is a 30 percent upward shift over this year. And as our capacities keep coming up every now and then every quarter, we keep updating our guidance uh, towards upward uh, upward section as well, and uh, try to do better as well. And if we talk about the guidance for the next year, we should be again doing a 30 percent growth. Minimum for the next three four years. Okay, and uh, uh, you have mentioned uh, six hundred crores capex in uh, coming two years, right? Uh, if I heard yeah. you correct, it, it's two three years. Like not to give exact numbers, but around two and a half three years is something that we can expect everything to outflow in. And your plan for one to two million ton expansion uh, means that will be contingent upon the funds available. I means uh, raising of funds, right? And any any pillar you want to throw on that, uh, 
are we on track uh, for one to two million ton expansion? And by when you envisage that uh, that will also flow through in uh, in the longer term? Yes, there's no uh, study that is saying you know expanding from million tons to two million tons. The company has been growing its margins and recently uh, increasing the profit as well and profit as well. So if you talk about the whole scenario, the promoters also help them by uh, putting in some money as well. So altogether, the company is a very comfortable cash situation right now for the future growth, and uh, there is no stress as a we see for the coming month. So and as and when the company requires money, the promoters are flexible to put in the money that time as well. So there is no agenda that we have made that we will be putting in money the last day or last something or the other. As and when the, uh, the company requires money, the, the company has adequate money right now. But as and when the company will require money, maybe for advance to the supplier or uh, to order the for, the advance of machinery, we keep putting the money from the promoter side itself. Okay, uh, and uh, on with regards to demand, so uh, in this first uh, half of this fiscal, do we expect some softness in demand because of the elections and all, or uh, you expect that the demand will pick up only from the second half? Uh, any color on uh, the demand pick up? So we're expecting our, uh, obviously the uh, demand should pick up enormously by X2, but our X1 should be strong as well. And uh, we should try and give all, new all-time high, all new all-time high in every quarter. Okay, fair enough. Thanks for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure the management is able to address questions from all the participants, and the conference, please limit your questions to two per participants. If you have a follow-up questions, we will request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Bhavin Pandey from Crust Plutos. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, congratulations, Pranav, on great set of numbers and a wonderful you guys had at GTL. Um, just uh, uh, first thing, uh, so this acquisition of uh, Naba Steel, uh, sort of uh, takes me back to the previous interaction we had where the key mode uh, cited was the backward integration to the core uh, that helps company uh, sort of, you know, generate economies of scale. So could you just shed light on this both uh, economically as well as if you could quantify the effect of this acquisition, it would be of great help. Thanks, Bob, for the question. So this acquisition on Nabas TV will help us uh, basically expand our margins. Right now, in a Monday plant, we procure around 1.5 lakh tons material, 1.2 lakh tons material from secondary players who are locally available and supply the product of uh, secondary uh, coil. Having the acquisition of Naba Steel, we'll uh, in-house make the coil itself, and this will be from scratch. From scrap. So effectively, we should be like on a black tie right now, if making close to 2,000 rupees, 1,500 rupees a beta per ton. So it should be at least 30 percent more saving on um, increasing the data burden on the black web itself. So uh, it is yet to start. We it will take a quarter or two, or maybe two quarters as well right now for the final production from Naba Steel to start because we make some changes in the capacity right now. But once everything is set, uh, you can see a significant in, uh, increase in the bottom line. Okay. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, secondly, Pranav, on uh, inventory front, uh, the, uh, the days uh, inventory in hand has declined. Uh, so any just sort of uh, reason that could be attributed to it? Uh, can you just read the question? Yeah. Uh, inventory days have uh, declined on a year, year basis for FY24. So any reason for that? Uh, so basically, uh, since we are not into the business of manufacturing steel, we are just converting steel. So uh, we tend to uh, make ourselves more leaner when uh, the prices go down and material availability is uh, robust. So and uh, 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 and uh, vice versa when the material availability is uh, not uh, uh, so uh, free, uh, uh, frequently available, then you have to stock up. So these are the reasons. Last year, uh, the, there was a, a good connection in prices, and uh, uh, we were able to also uh, move out our finished goods uh, on a timely basis. Uh, and uh, that's how we also did, uh, tended to increase a little bit on our, in our market share. 
to uh, have timely deliveries, increase in uh, our uh, product prof uh, pro uh, pro uh, profile. So these are the reasons that we did pay better, better on the inventory days uh, uh, as compared to the previous year. Okay, okay. And just one last thing on <laughs> on uh, return ratios. Of course, you know they would not look as great as they were last year because of the expansion that's happening. But could you maybe shed some light on when we could see these numbers inching up in the uh, positive direction? Um, so, if you're talking about the ROCs and ROVs, so the 62 crores of amount is still in working progress. And when these assets will come and start spreading, they will start generating the results. And uh, so, the, this is a phase where we have raised capital for further growth, and hence there's a temporary blip, which will eventually reach 30 level uh, in the coming in this coming year itself. And if you talk about the margins of the company, like it's better to look at the company's performance on a data button basis and not in a percentage manner because the percentage obviously keeps varying depending on the HRC prices. So the data button has been altogether in a healthy growth manner and uh, so we don't see any um, downfall which has happened except maybe the ROC ROE. Wonderful. That was really helpful for now. Uh, congratulations again and uh, good luck. Good luck for the year ahead. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of CA Rajesh Mangal Agarwal from Rajesh Mangal and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hello. Thanks for the opportunity. I, w I have just two questions. Uh, why the Q2, Q, quarter to quarter sales has been reduced uh, near about 17% from 567 crore to 466 crore. And second one is why the promoter shareholding is reducing? I am a local, uh, retail investor. Um, thanks, Adesh, for your question. So the company's goal is to supply products in the market, having the, a good margin as well. If you look at the numbers last quarter, we did a lack of the volume. And that quarter, our VAPs, our VP product share was low. Hence, the absolute EBITDA and the actual profit the company did is almost same to what we did this year, uh, this quarter. And uh, so it really doesn't make a difference if we are, it, it basically dies if you playing that side or this side. So the focus of the company is to eventually increase its VAP share. And this will be happening in a phased manner every now and then quarter. In this quarter, we expect the volumes to be good as well, again, reaching a new all-time high with the increase in VAT share as well. So that's how we aim to get the market uh, in the future. And if you talk about the shareholding of the promoters, the promoter share, shareholding has gone down because we've promoted some warrants, uh, which has led to the decrease in shareholding. There are no sell of stake from the promoter or any of the promoter entities. So the promoter is not, not selling at all. It is just some conversion of warrants which have been happening uh, every now and then in the quarter, which uh, decrease the shareholding. Now, uh, if you talk about the situation now, we've done the, we've issued the promoter's warrant as well in December. So post that, our shareholding is supposed to go up. So it's just a phase manner in which maybe one to quarters we keep seeing the shareholding is down, going down because of the warrant conversion from the public category. But eventually when the promoters will convert their warrants, the shareholding should go back to 60s level. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the uh, answer. And uh, the last question is, why this ROC and ROE is reducing drastically near about 50% has been uh, reduced as compared to last financial year? So as I mentioned, around 65 crores is in working progress for the advances of uh, machines that we sent, uh, given. So when, when these assets come and when they will start sweating, they will gen generate results and give numbers as well. So it's just a temporary blip that is visible. I think by H2 itself, by end of H1 itself, we should see the ROCs and ROCs going back to 30 levels. Thank you. Thank you. That's very helpful. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pallav Agarwal from Antic Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning. Uh, uh, just a question, you know, on the uh, the one million ton expansion plan. So, are there any concrete timelines as of now? You know, by when can we expect production to start from there? Thanks, Pala, for your question. 
so we expecting uh, everything to be set up or commissioned by fourth quarter and the same numbers should be evident in the next financial year fully okay uh, and, and what about the the additional i'm talking about the additional 1 million from 1 to 2 million tanu so uh, all right all right for the additional 1 to 2 million the company's plan is to set up everything by the 27 and the same production for the entire level come by the 28 so by the 27 end or maybe before we expecting anything to be set up across the manasha plant uh, obviously it's going to happen in a phase manner so every now and then and every quarter you will see the numbers flowing in because of some machines coming in uh, but the entire scenario of the whole 2 million tons should be evident post f27 sure okay uh, and also you know just on the ebitda per ton metric uh, you know compared to peers uh, we have significantly done better in the fourth quarter uh so are there any still old galvanized contracts under jal jeevan mission still in place or now those out of the system and this uh, you know we we can probably maintain or increase the ebitda per ton due to higher backward integration is that the scenario uh, going ahead uh uh for the jal jeevan mission right now uh, since uh, uh, a new permit is under formulation and soon we will see uh, it up and running only after that uh, the full budget uh, when the full budget is declared only after that uh, the allotment will happen and the new orders will come in we only have a, a little bit of uh, uh, trickled uh, orders from the last year which are uh, say pending to be completed but uh, the full flow of all these projects will come in only after uh, the full budget is declared so uh, after that we can see uh, a good uh, rise in orders from these entities but uh, uh, due to a recent correction in prices and uh, market being stronger we have seen a good demand uh, in uh, this month and going forward we see that uh, uh, there is there is going to be a good uh, 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 flow of material uh, with the uh, increase in range that we are coming up with also the export market is uh, doing better as compared to uh, last year's performance uh, with increase in prices worldwide so we we see that uh, most of the legs are covered and since we are not uh, stuck in a supply to one organization or one sector we we have the opportunity to increase the supply in others so yes uh, uh, we we see a good uh, flow of materials right now sure so so basically you know the i advantage in being present in both primary and secondary markets and backward integration is is already showing up in the superior ebitda per ton and this should continue going ahead so is that broadly you know correct that's correct it's further going down it's further increase as well as we mentioned because of the acquisition of nabas steel how the numbers will add up and like they will effectively not be evident in the top line but they should be evident in the bottom line sure sure uh, yeah okay thank you thank you for the answer thank you the next question is from the line of darshil pandya from fentress capital please go ahead hello sir good morning uh, so just want to understand uh, uh, have we implemented the dft technology which was supposed to be commissioned in q1 fy25 no the dft technology is talking to you is right in the way right now and be being imported from china it should be reaching the plant by this quarter or maybe beginning of the next quarter and should be commissioned by end of h1 uh, so it's kind of delayed if i am not wrong yeah it's been delayed by a month or two okay and uh, what will be the capacity post this uh, dft technology is also uh, commissioned by the end of uh, fy25 it should be 1 million and before that once this uh, technology is commissioned so we are adding capacities in our raipur plant as well in our maharashtra plant as well so we are adding around 2 lakh tons of capacity including dft in the maharashtra plant and similarly we are adding capacities of 2 lakh tons in our raipur plant as well so all together we should have a million tons of capacity by before the year ends okay the just want to understand sir uh, as the guidance has been given of 30 to 35% but it is not wrong uh, as uh, you know we have done some acquisitions as well and uh, 
as this capacity numbers will be obviously live by next year so uh, just want to understand is uh, 30 to 35% uh, uh, achievable or we can do more than that given this new acquisitions also done and a beta pattern we are expecting some good uh, good uptake in this next year so the expansion is that uh, the acquisition that we've done right now it's a back integration so this won't be really evident in the top uh, in the top line or the volumes the uh, numbers that we are given of 35 30% growth is without accounting for all the expansion that we are doing this year itself as well so as and when the machines come we keep upgrading our guidance for the coming itself so it's a matter of time when the machines come and uh, we'll maybe build a guidance okay got it and uh, this year vap uh, product share was around 34.5% right and we are expecting 40% Uh, yeah, this year our value to product share was around 35, 30%, and going down the line, this year we expect to cross the 40% mark. Okay. My last question, sir. Uh, as you know, uh, Q4 we see uh, some some demand slow down. Uh, how is this quarter being? Like uh, as on date, as we speak today. As of day today, we have been seeing uh, very good demand from the export market as well, and uh, we are very confident that we should achieve a new all-time high this quarter. Got it. And export share, are, are we seeing this number to go still up because we are we are seeing some good uh, uptick in the export numbers overall? Yeah, we've counted last quarter. And, uh, we've accounted exports for this quarter, and then given the new targets, uh, there's a good demand in the exports. But uh, we know that the domestic market will recover now and then, maybe by end of uh, this quarter or beginning of second quarter. So, um, our Give me exact number on how much percentage of exports we would do this year would be hard right now because the domestic market itself is very strong. All right, all right. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Agarwal from VT Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand how do you hedge yourself against the RM prices, like? uh in the last uh, one month about uh, hrc prices have been on an uptrend so how do we see our margin shaping up going forward just because of the rm price hike so to uh, continue our production in a uh, say full manner we do have to keep an inventory for 12 to 15 days but it really fairly depends upon how we are uh, uh, shaped up against uh, the back to back orders Uh, to give you a broad overview, like currently we have uh, two kinds of products: primary and secondary. In the primary market, uh, we are procuring materials from where we do Tata sale, wherein uh, we do have a monthly pricing with them. We are able to procure uh, so much material from them that we are able to sell in a month. That is fairly covered from uh, those entities. And in the secondary market, there is a daily pricing. So whatever the increase, the increase in the market there is, it's on a daily basis, and not even say a daily basis on a say a hourly basis. So there we are able to hedge our raw materials on a back-to-back basis. So uh, these are uh, fairly uh, the points that may, uh, that let us cover our uh, raw material hedge. Uh, when we talk about a supply to our uh, end user, say the government organization is supplied to a government entity, there is a price duration clause. Even if I do a pricing with them, uh, the beginning of the year, uh, the pricing uh, that is applicable is on the basis of the month that the material is being supplied to them. And uh, uh, from the dealer network, it's on a monthly price basis, on a contract to contract price basis. So we are fairly Covered on our purchases and sales uh, in that manner, and exports as well. We we have a fixed price basis wherein we are only uh, uh, the, uh, occupying orders which we can complete in a time frame of 30 to 45 days, uh, which does not allow us uh, a, a lot of time for uh, say have a effect of the increase or decrease in prices. So uh, that's fairly uh, how we work on these matters. Okay. So, so to a fair extent, you can basically uh, uh, pass on the price escalations or the reductions to the end customers. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yes, yes. All, right. all right. And uh, so, uh, reasons why your volumes fell down in Q4, like on a quarter-on-quarter basis, if you look at it that way. Uh, 
Um, so if you talk about the volume for the fourth quarter, it's basically, as I mentioned, a dice which I can throw this side or that side. So if I'm just doing more volumes, I'm not focusing on the main product, I don't want to increase my sales for in the future, which is larger products. So then I'm actually eventually taking a hit on my margin. So like if you look at the whole numbers, like the numbers as a whole for quarter four versus quarter three, just just mm-hmm. being the same in the bottom line and the beta, everything. And in fact, the beta button has increased in a very good manner. So mm-hmm. the company's goal is to not spoil the market, to have the margins have uh, increased the market share with proper distribution of these value products as well. So that's the company's approach. And this quarter itself, uh, we have a new Gamazin tank, which is being commissioned and starting up in uh, Maharashtra and a rifle plant. So after this commission, we'll be able to supply more black types and at the same time supply more gallon types as well. Supplying black pies and increasing the market share is not a problem for the company. Cutting up 200 rupees and selling black pies is something that can be done overnight. But that's not the goal. It will eventually take a hit on the Vita as a whole. So hence we'll be uh, having a approach in which every quarter we'll be increasing our VAT share as well and, and at the same time increasing the whole volume as well. Okay, understood. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Virat Shah from Arihant Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, I have a few questions. Uh, firstly, regarding to the industry, uh, if in per ton uh, capacity, if you can tell me what is the industry capacity right now and the demand, uh, let's say for FY24. Uh, um, thanks for your question. It's very hard to give a light on what is the exact industry size, but we expect the industry would be close to 13, 14 million tons. And uh, there'll be various, um, various numerous players in that. And uh, the projection for this year, we've already mentioned, we'll be doing close to 4.5 like like tons of volume this year moving forward, which will be further upgraded when. Uh, are different capex machines as and when come in the plants. Uh, so, but uh, this uh, four lakh tons is something that we are adding. Uh, industry-wise, if you could tell me how much capacity is coming in, uh, it'll be hard to tell exact number how much capacity is coming. In. There are few players who are adding capacity. So, next to that, we know that around one million ton is something we being added in our peers itself. But getting the number for the whole industry is something uh, we can't really get, tell right now. And obviously, our goal is not just to increase the same products. Our goal is to increase our excuse. So no matter what the industry is adding, our products are a little different from the others. We are adding more SKUs, which are create, like which are replacement of world and uh, having ample users and have a good demand in the export market as well. So being a star export house, we see a good demand in the export market for our product itself as well. Uh, what we will be manufacturing in the future with the capex. So that's about it. Right, right, understood. Uh, so my next question is regarding the DFT capacity. So what is the current DFT capacity in the six lakh ton capacity that we have? And when we reach one million tons, so what uh, that is by the end of FI25, how much of DFT will it have? So we don't have a DFT capacity right now. And uh, uh, because whatever capacity that we have, it's up till 12 inches of pipe, it just doesn't include DFT in any of the plants. Going forward, yeah, going forward we will, uh, in from a one lakh uh, tons of uh, one million tons of capacity, we would be having uh, about uh, two lakh tons of capacity as DFT structures uh, and eight lakh tons as traditional pipe manufacturing. Understood. So in the Raipur and Maharashtra. Uh, with the two places that we are adding uh, capacity to, two lakhs each, uh, so DFT will be added uh, one one lakh uh, in each capacity. By the end of this year, we are adding uh, one, uh, one lakh tons of capacity, DFT capacities in our uh, in our uh, mango plant, and uh, say by the early next year, we will be adding another one lakh tons of DFT capacity in our Raipur plant. So that's what our uh, plan going forward is. Okay, understood. And uh, there were some details that you mentioned on call. I just want to confirm this again with you because uh, there was some disturbance on the line for me. Uh, KPEX, you've mentioned 150 to 200 crores. 
uh and uh, in uh, the warrants out of 675 crores only 170 have been paid up yet so the remainder will be done by september you know so basically uh, out of 675 the last date is supposed to be i think the money that we see was around in uh, february so the date for us to make the last payment is one and a half years post february so that's effectively august uh, for next financial year but promoters are not sticking to that in fact promoters will be putting in money every now and then after every like maybe after x1 as well and similarly after x2 as well basically whenever the company requires money we have the flexibility of putting the money that way the remaining uh, the second september the date which i mentioned to you was for the bonus that get previously in the public category it's the last for those people and uh, the money of amounting to plus 170 crore is expected to come before that Understood. And a bit of a turn, sir. Uh, you mentioned that we are expecting to reach five thousand rupees per ton this year from forty-four fifty that we did in FI twenty-four. Yes. So basically, tracking the beta per ton every quarter is something uh, uh, that we can guarantee about. But obviously, it should be in a scale manner. The company's number as a whole for the full financial year, financial year or maybe for the half year, is something what one should compare with. Because that's how the growth is uh, visible. Like if you look at the company's numbers this year as well for the full financial year, the company has done growth. Obviously, comparing quarter on quarter would be hard. So like last year as well, uh, when we had extremely high beta per ton, we mentioned it's one of our case scenario. If you go back to the con calls as well, we mentioned that there was a humongous entry gain that happened because of the merger that took place because of our IPO entity because it was back into the data over there. So uh, all things added up, they increased the beta per ton. But they were not sustainable without adding VAT products, uh, which we have done now. So eventually, we we will reach a number greater than that as well. But this will eventually happen in an organic manner by increasing our VAT products. Understood. And uh, did you mention, sir, that uh, the 30-35 percent growth that we are expecting that is without the expansion? No, uh, is that the right thing that you said? So right now, if I'm talking about It's a, it is with expansion, obviously, because our DFT will come in as well this quarter, and and our addition machine, these other Raipur and our Maharashtra plant will come in this quarter itself as well. So it does include expansion part as well. It's just that a few products like galvanizing pipe, galvanized pipe, uh, we've already installed tanks for that in our plant, which will increase the lap shares simultaneously. Okay, and there's one final question. I I'll just get back in with you after this. Uh, We have almost 130 plus acres of land bank. So after one million tons, we are aiming to um, uh, reach till two million tons of capacity. Uh, after reaching one million tons, sir, out of this 130 acres, how much will be required to reach to add another one million tons? Uh, so right now, if you talk about the area, so out of the whole 130 acres scenario, around 9500 acres is what we have in our. Uh, Maharashtra plant itself. In our Maharashtra plant, around seven eight acres is covered right now. Going down the line to increase the capacity to a million tons, maybe another ten acres would be covered at max. So post that, when I'm expanding to two uh, million tons from million tons, there will be anyway a lot of land mass still left. I won't be covering more than forty fifty acres going down the line again as well. So the land bank would be still left over there for further future expansions. And I'll just put it this another way. So out of 130 acres, we'll be using up roughly 40 to 50 acres, and we'll still have uh, 80 to 90 acres left uh, even after reaching 2 million tons. We'll be obviously developing the area, making some parts of it for storing some particular sizes of pipes as well. So giving exact number, how much area would be ample that time going down the line? Uh, it's hard to say right now. Okay, understood. Uh, all the best sir, for the future. I'll just get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjeev Damani from SKD Consulting. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, Namaskar, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, so now for my first question is regarding direct farming technology, uh, which is used on the page number three of your. media uh, submission uh, where capacities are also mentioned so i heard you know a lot of disturbances were there in this conference 
but i heard that right now we do not have any dft capacity we are going to put them up so can you elaborate what is direct farming technology and uh, can you also tell me that whether it will start from iron ore to finished form, formed products or how it will work please sir please reply. yeah uh, i had the money uh, so uh, see uh, the direct farming technology is the traditional way of making a square and rectangular structure from the other pipes it forms a round tube first and then converting into a square or rectangular structure which does not allow us to uh, uh, make heavier grade uh, or higher grade steel structures from uh, the traditional uh, machine that we do and is also a, a very uh, tedious product uh, to tedious uh, thing to do uh, to make any uh, non standardized standardized or uh, special products that are required by the engineering industry so the the, the dft technology allows us to have a uh, the square and rectangular sections produced directly uh, uh, without converting into a round structure first uh and to answer your question about what uh, raw material will be using will be using hr coils only for the production of dft it's it is not from the source of uh ore uh, we will be using the same raw material of hr coils but uh, a higher grade and a higher thickness uh, will be allowed uh, in the production of the dft structures okay my second question is whether we manufacture seamless tubes or not we do not manufacture seamless tubes okay so all our products are welded only right sir yes. and the yes. backward integration you have talked about is 2 lakh metric ton because of the acquisition of naba steel so what yes. exactly uh, that naba steel has facilities to manufacture can i know sir so naba steel is backward integrated how is that we use uh narrow width uh, coils for manufacturing manufacturing of eww pipes and uh, tubes naba steel has a melting shop wherein uh, we can melt uh, scrap to form uh, billets the billets are then rerolled to uh, narrow width hr coils which will be used for capital consumption okay sir so uh, are we running at full capacity of 2 lakh tons in naba now or we are uh, get to build so so we have just uh, took over naba steel we are uh, we are still in the process of uh, upgrading and uh, uh, getting it under our nose for its full uh, capacity utilization after uh, say a quarter's time we would be having the full uh, capacity of naba steel running under our supervision so how much is the capex here sir uh, in upgrading and refitting this uh, unit So it's just uh, uh, see it, it was a, a running plant, but it it is just a certain minor absorption and process flows and de bottle making that we are doing. So there are there is no mind, uh, mind, uh, major changes that we are doing, and uh, it is just a new plant itself. So we are just reorienting it uh, as per our uh, needs. So that is what we are doing right now. So to reconfirm, our capacity utilization will be hundred percent from next quarter from this plant. No, we will not be having a hundred percent utilization. The, uh, the average utilization will be somewhere around sixty-five uh, to seventy percent in this plant as well. Okay, and in Raipur also one lakh fifty thousand metric ton. We are putting up this kind of facility only. Uh, that is uh, using scrap to make basic steel and then process it. So we are we we are not doing that way. We we buy bullets from the market and then we okay. roll them into. Okay. So, uh, so in Raipur, you will, you are going to have a rolling plant. We already have a rolling plant. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, I am satisfied, and all the best to you, sir. Please, uh, 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 I pray that our company progresses well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Due to time constraint, that will be the last question. I will now. Like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Um, thanks, to Mama, for hosting the call, and thanks everybody for taking our time to attend the call as well and asking us uh, all the questions possible. Um, we like to give the guidance, which is uh, around 25-30% growth over this year for the next year. 
and at the same time working better with the market as well because of the whole uh, acquisitions that the company has planned out in such a way of back integration and forward integration uh, things should add up in a very good manner and then after h2 h1 itself the numbers should be visible as well thank you everybody for joining thanks on behalf of numawa wealth management that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines